Hello, welcome and welcome back to a new Unreal Engine video. Today, today I I learned something else has has cable. We can we can use cables. We can do cables for bows. Let's make bows. Yeah, first person project. Bam. Here we go. So we have our interface for our first person character because that is where our component is going to live. And so what we're going to need is we have two static meshes here. Uh, one is the arrow. I simply modeled this in engine with a default material. The bow has three sockets, one for the top cable, one for the bottom cable, and then one for the spawn location for the arrow. The arrow has a five, five unit offset for the arrow, as that's what we need. In the component now, so the arrow, the arrow has, the projectile is a little special in that it is, the, the pivot point for the arrow is at the back. And so the projectile, You'll notice here in the projectile class itself, there's no collision. And collision is in fact disabled on this. There's no collision. Why? Because this static mesh component that we, or that I put together, is doing the collision for us. So it is doing a line trace. So the high level overview is that it's doing a line trace over this crazed monkey special of the timer event. And it's, there's also an interface that goes along with it, but the update of the collision happens when we want to enable it. So when the arrow is in the air, we'll enable the collision and make sure that the timer handle is valid. We'll set the actor rotation, the arrow rotation, to this mo make rotator from X and Y, where X is the velocity and Y is the forward vector, effectively rotating it towards the velocity to give us that nice arch. And yeah, here is the line trace from the back of the arrow for the arrow length, and it's going to scan for certain object types. You can set up whatever object types you want here. I promoted it to a variable, so you don't have to keep creating that array thing over and over. Actors to ignore is a variable because we actually want to pass in ourself when we fire off this projectile, but we don't want to do it here, so we promote it to a variable. And because by default, it's not going to be enabled, so there's no point in having this yet. Well, the bow component will enable it. So if we have a impact point, if we hit something, we will clear and invalidate that timer handle. Stop all projectile movement. We will grab the current location, the impact point. We'll find the look at rotation forward vector, and we are going to calculate how far we penetrated the material. And this is just a flat, this is just a flat uh, multiplier. So it's going to go in, in the material at a 0.35 rate or 0.35 of the, the arrow itself. And that'll set our location. We'll attach it to that. We'll then attach it to whatever component we hit. That way, if the if it's like a physics actor, it'll move with the physics actor. After a dis despawn delay, we'll, uh, yeah, after a de delay, we'll despawn the actor. And that's for, here's like the 10. Arrow length, obviously, you're going to have to play around with whatever your arrow length is. Um, the arrow length and, and the penetration. Yeah, it just... What? I'm back. So that is the uh, that's the projectile. So that's that's the fancy projectile that's just basically doing a line trace from the back and then calculating where it should where it should set the location. The bow component. The bow component is the thing that holds everything together and which controls it all. So these are going to go on the first person character. And so this has a handful of things here also that we make note of. They have the cable component. It has the arrow projectile class. The projectile itself. The actual reference. The spawn socket name here, so that's going to be the spawn socket name. It's going to have the list of sockets for our bow strings. It'll have our pull distance. This is going to be a counter for how far we've pulled the bow back. This is going to be our max distance, so however far we've pulled the bow back, or whatever the max distance we can pull it back is. The current bow power, this is another counter. This is going to be just a reference between, or this is going to be a map between whatever the max and, or the minimum and the maximum is based on however far the distance is to calculate the velocity in the end. The base arrow speed, we have a base um, draw speed multiplier. We have our list of bow strings as cable components. We have our materials, we have our string width, we have our, and our string visibility time, which gives us the effect that the bow, the strings have been, uh, or the arrow has been fired off. So the begin play, save the character, and we set up a mini timey, timer event here to do a little nice little quality of life. And so this is just going to, uh, when we pull it back, we're just going to clamp it between 0 and 1, multiply it by 30, and add it to 90. And then we're just going to F interpolate to that. So we're going to go between 90 and 120 FOV when we pull the bow back. And then it'll it'll go back to normal. And that's why we run that on the timer. So the button press here, it's an action key. And the action key is set to a hold and release. Very similar to how we did the fishing rod, if you saw that. The started, off the started line here, we will spawn the actor at our socket location in the direction of our camera. That's what the make rotation from X and Y is doing. And yeah, we'll save save the reference. We will then attach it to ourself at our spawn socket. 
we'll attach it to the socket because this is a this is the static mesh component that's holding holding our bow right here so that's holding our bow so the next step here will be to loop through all of those sockets that we have here the list of sockets and to create those bow strings and the bow strings are where we create the compa cable components so uh, you saw you've probably seen this before we create the component class we set up the attach end to component but with the socket name being now a variable instead and then we can just set up a bunch of the parameters material width, visibility and then most notably we set up a list at the end here where we add it the ongoing trigger here the ongoing is going to do our bow our our bow pullback so if we are within the distance so we'll calculate the distance between the socket location and the actor location and that'll be our distance we'll map and clamp that for our current power so we have a so we have the configuration for the power which is 1 in 10 1 in 10 yep so this will set the distance so we got the distance. This will do a backwards draw. This is pulling it backwards, basically, on, because it's negating the forward vector. So it's pulling it back. Yeah. So if it's within the distance still, so this is the this is the max pull distance, which is 150 again. So if the distance is within within 150, then continue pulling it back, and that'll be it. And then yeah, if it's at or above 150, it'll stop pulling it back. Cancelled, completed. This will detach the actor. We'll do the simple um, velocity calculation here. Or the from the bow power and the base speed we'll reset the gravity we'll go to that projectile line trace component and we'll enable it and then we'll set our actors to ignore to be ourself because we we are the owner and then we'll reset the pole, di pole distance we'll reset the bow power and then after a certain delay we'll just clear out all the, the bow strings by setting their visibility to hidden because the projectile will take care of all the rest so to see this in action now we can see bring it up i have the bow on the left side here with and if I press E, which is what I had it mapped to, we can see I pull it back and the line trace is on for the component. So we should be able to see, or we will see, the line trace. Yep, there you go. And you can see that if we pull it back only a little bit, it only fires a little bit. And you'll notice the arrows, they stick in a certain amount into like the wall and stuff. You can see it sticks into the wall. Yeah, who needs who needs fancy uh who needs fancy effects when you have just simple line traces to uh, track track the movement of falling arrows falling arrows. It kind of reminds me of the um what was that uh, there I don't know if you've ever played it but we used to have like lawn darts that you used to throw up in the air. Kind of reminds me of that. Um, that's fun. That's cool. Yeah. So. That's a that's just like a simple like arcadey style bow system. I mean, let me know what you think of it in the comments, or let me know if you made the system yourself, or if there's any improvements. It'll need to be more improvements, obviously, because you want to set up like some damage and stuff like that. But yeah, look at that. Just like it looks like a pin cushion. It's honestly really funny. And because because there's like a whole bunch of parameters that you can customize, it's just like. Yep. Who needs fancy effects when you just have simple line traces, huh? So wait, so wait, if so, so now, all right, so if, if that means what I think it means, let's go. <laughs> okay, all right, let's see, let me grab this guy. There we go. Oh my god, there is... There's a dragon. There is a dragon. Get the dragon. Get the dragon. Get the dragon. <laughs> Get the dragon. <laughs> All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope you found it helpful. I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Cool.